This is a solar generator that nobody's talking about and I think everybody needs to be talking about it. This is the X1200 from Imantech and it has absolutely blown my mind. It's extremely portable, it's perfect for camping, overlanding, using at a cabin, but get this, it can even join two units together and run split phase power to run a house and the real cherry on the top, you can use any external 48 volt battery pack, which is basically something that nobody's doing. But there are two other things that absolutely blew my mind about the X1200, as well as two things that are major red flags you need to know about. As with all of my videos, I'm not being told what I have to say or exclude or I'm not to give a positive opinion or a negative opinion. This is just my own personal opinion and what I've experienced with the X1200. There's nothing that can sway my opinion about this. My name's Ben, this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. I've been working with solar generators for about 10 years now, and the X1200 has truly surprised me. It really doesn't look that pretty, but it's extremely utilitarian and functional. I'm gonna go over all of the specs and the results that I got from testing these two units here. I've had this for over six months that I've been testing, and the reason I've waited to put this video out for so long is because they constantly keep going out of stock because people keep buying them. And that's because in a small unit just like this, in this little briefcase style, you actually have a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. I don't know why they're only rating it to 2000 watts because I ran multiple loads beyond that up to 2500 watts constantly. It'll surge up to 4000 watts and when you join two of them together, everything doubles across the board. So you can basically get up to 5000 watts of output, maybe call it 4800 to be safe, even though it's only rated to 4000. But that also means you can surge up to 8000 watts, which makes it very easy to run a well pump and some small air conditioners. You could run a mini split that's probably 24,000 BTUs or less, but in terms of an electric dryer, an electric water heater, a range, an oven, those things are gonna use more power than what these two units together can run. That's why it's perfect for something like a cabin because you could take this and bring it home so you have home backup power, but then take it in your RV, go to your cabin, go wherever, and have split phase power that you can literally carry with you, but it is going to be limited on the output you're just not gonna run all of your 240 volt electrical appliances. On the AC output side of the unit, you have three outlets. They're rated to 20 amps per outlet, but overall you're not gonna get more than that 24 to 2500 watts even though it's rated to 2000 watts. But I was amazed when testing the inverter that I got 91% efficiency out of this when putting a 0.2C load on it. So that means I had 1,165 watt hours of usable AC power, even though it's rated to 1,280 watt hours. And the idle power consumption rate is quite low at only 18 watts. Overall, it's a pretty quiet unit. When the fans are running, but they're not running at full speed, I got around 44 decibels on my decibel meter, but when it had either a very heavy load or a lot of charge going into it or even both, I got upwards of about 55 to 57 decibels, which is kind of like a quiet conversation. It's quieter than what I'm talking at right now. Because it's so compact, it doesn't have a huge battery in it. So when I did a test running my refrigerator, I was only able to run for about nine hours constantly. But for a short-term blackout, this would work perfect for that. You can run both the AC outlets and the DC outlets, such as the USB ports, all at the same time. And there are two 100 watt USB-C, two 65 watt USB-C, and two 24 watt USB-A, plus two 5.5 millimeter barrel ports. These are truly amazing, I absolutely love them, but if you're looking to get discounts on these as well as discounts on the solar panels, cables, other accessories that work well with these, I'm gonna have those links in the description down below. Just go down and click show more. It helps support the channel because it is an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. If anything, it's gonna give you extra discounts so you're saving more, and I truly appreciate the support of the channel. But what is so mind-blowing and different about the iMontech X1200 is that you can use a server rack battery. Now, I'm gonna have a different review dedicated to these Humsync server batteries because they're quite impressive. It depends on the sales going on. These were 600 bucks at the time that I got them. I think they're $700 right now. Imontech is perfectly fine with people using their own batteries because lots of people already have these. The battery cells that are inside of the X1200 are lithium iron phosphate and they rate them to 2,500 cycles. Most other brands and models are rated to 3,500 to 4,000 cycles. It's only 20 inches across the front, 16 inches from front to back, and five inches tall. In the six months that I've been using and testing this, you can tell just how beat up these things are because I've been taking them all over with me. I don't really worry about it getting beat up. 
And at 38 pounds, this is pretty easy to move around just by yourself. And when you're on the road with it, this does have a wireless app you can use. It works with both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. In terms of charging, there's a few ways to do this. It comes pre-programmed at 1200 watts of wall charging. Now that's adjustable both within the screen as well as within the app. The app is called Smart Life and it's really easy to use. On the app, I can see this unit and I can control everything that's going on with it right here and it responds very quickly. I can see how much is coming in either from car charging or solar charging or wall charging because those are the three ways that it can charge. And it even tells me right here how much time is left before the battery runs out. When you go into settings, you can change almost every aspect about this. In order to change the dark start features though, you do have to go into the programming of this unit. To do that is a little tricky. First, you wanna power down the X1200. Then take the wall charging cable. This is just a normal C13 cable that came with the unit. Plug that into the side of the unit it will turn itself on and then you press and hold the AC output button for approximately eight seconds. Once you do that, a programming screen will show up here on this little tiny screen. And to adjust each line item, you just click the AC output button. But if you want to go down the list to a different line item, then you hold the AC output button. It's very programmable and customizable to however you wanna run it. I'm gonna compare this to three other units that I think are similar in specs and see how this stacks up against them just here in a few minutes. But what absolutely blew my mind about this with the UPS function, I was able to get up to 2,500 watts of UPS pass-through on this unit. Now the user manual says it's actually only rated to 1,440 watts or that it can peak up to 1,800 watts in the UPS mode. But I tested it for a good five minutes of nonstop 2,500 watt draw and this had no problem running it as a UPS. That means that it was drawing no power from the battery and it was only drawing that from another solar generator that I had this connected to. So even if you're running something heavy duty like a water pump, this can do it as a UPS without a problem. As you'd expect, this is not grounded when it's standalone as a single unit, but as soon as you plug in a wall charger, it's grounded. Most of the time, solar generators of this size have really crappy solar input they almost always go with a 60 volt charge controller. That's just the microchip that converts solar power to battery power. It's technically rated from 12 to 150 volts and 20 amps. That's plenty of range and parameter to be able to use 100 watt panels, 200 watt panels, 400 watt panels, 590 watt panels, whatever it is you want to use, this will work with pretty much any panel. But in general, the easiest way to get the 1200 watts of input is to take three or four 400 watt solar panels. Just check that the VOC or the open circuit voltage is 37 volts right about there because four of them in series is gonna be about 148 volts. A car charger is included with the unit and so you can get anywhere from about 80 to 120 watts of input because it's an adjustable amount, you set how fast you want it to charge. AC input, DC input all at the same time, not a problem for the X1200. It's really just an easy unit to use. It's so simple, anybody who has no experience with a solar generator can figure this out. But here's one of the absolute best things about the X1200. If you've stayed with me in this video so far, please smash the like button. Dark start is when this runs down to 0% or 5%, whatever you set as the bottom of the state of charge. Well, by nine or 10 in the morning, when the solar panels are recharging these units, and the battery gets to 10 or 20%, whatever you set it to, it will automatically turn the outlets back on. If I'm not home, this will continue running my fridge or whatever appliance I have plugged in, completely automated. And you don't have to have Wi-Fi or an app or anything to do that. But the real kicker is the price. This thing is only $600 for everything that you're getting with a basically 2,500 watt inverter, 1300 watt hours of battery capacity, 1200 watts of solar, meaning you can charge this in basically an hour, dark start, the ability to put two of these together for split face power, all of that for $600. There's nothing on the market that's coming close to that for 600 bucks. Now there are some other units that are comparable to this in that same price range that I'm gonna get to in just a second. The thing though with this is the customer service, it's only okay. It's kind of hard to reach them during the day and I've had most interaction with them over email. So you're going to get help, it's just not gonna be super fast like you'd expect with a big brand company. And the other thing is this only has a two year warranty. The three other units that I think this compares to though is first the Pecron E2000 LFP 
and then second, the Opez Mega 2, and then third, the EcoFlow Delta 3 Max. And all of this is on my comparison chart so you can see it. Price-wise, this is $600. The E2000 LFP is $520 or $519 right now. The Mega 2 is $749, and the Delta 3 Max is $1,099. So this isn't the absolute cheapest, but it's darn near close to the cheapest, especially for the features that you get, it's really cheap. In terms of output capability, the X1200 is rated to 2000 watts, but I've been able to get 24 to 2500 watts without a problem. The E2000 LFP is rated to 2000 watts of output. The Mega 2 is rated to 2500 watts of output and the Delta 3 Max is rated to 2400 watts. So they're all pretty much the same in terms of output capability, but the Delta 3 Max does have an X boost feature, which will go up to 3.4 kilowatts. As I previously mentioned, the X1200 kind of lacks on battery capacity at only 1,280 watt hours. The E2000 LFP is bigger at 1,920 watt hours. And then both the Mega 2 and the Delta 3 Max have 2,048 watt hours. But in terms of battery expandability, none of them get even close to the X1200, especially for the fact that you can use whatever 48 volt batteries you want externally. They even include the adapter that you need. This is the battery connection here. And then it comes with a breaker. And all you have to do is wire up the breaker with this battery connection. And then it's got these battery terminal lugs right here so that it can go straight on to a server battery. I was able to wall charge this and this at the same time. Once you connect an X1200 to an external battery, it acts as just a simple external battery. There were no sparks or issues with the batteries connecting to each other, even though one was at 0% and the other was at 100%. What's so impressive is that the X1200 will go up to 1200 watts of solar input with a 150 volt charge controller. The E2000 LFP also does 1200 watts, but that's split between two charge controllers, each one being able to do 600 watts and only up to 95 volts. The Opez Mega 2 also goes up to 150 volts and it's rated to 2100 watts, but I've never gotten that. And then lastly, the Delta 3 Max will do 1,000 watts of solar input split between two solar inputs, and that's only up to 60 volts, which I dislike. What makes a solar generator? Why is this different than just this? Well, this doesn't have an inverter or a charge controller. So it can't convert this battery power to usable wall outlet power, and it can't take solar power and convert it to battery power. That's what makes a solar generator. And that's why when I compare the pricing, I don't only compare the price per watt hour because it's only one third of the picture. Factoring the inverter, battery, and solar, I call that a whole watt. And the whole watt price of the X1200 is only 42 cents, which is absolutely amazing. But the Pecron E2000 LFP actually beats that because that's only 32 cents and the Mega 2 is only 34 cents. But when you look at the Delta 3 Max, that is actually 70 cents per whole watt. So it's almost twice the price for what you get compared to the price of what you get for the E2000 LFP and the Mega 2. That said, of all of those units, even though this isn't the absolute cheapest on a whole watt price, there's nothing that comes close to it in the entire middle cap category of the free solar generator comparison chart. Nothing can do what these can do in terms of the split phase power, the expandability with the batteries, the good solar input being up to 150 volts, going up to 2,500 watts, having the dark start capability, using external batteries, being able to program the system without having to use your phone. And when you're using this in split phase mode, there's this special connector that goes between the battery ports on the two units and will keep the units balanced. It's also skinny enough that you can sit this on top of your fridge, maybe even next to your fridge. It's so compact, it's easy to put in many different locations. When you use it in split phase mode, all you have to do is get this split phase 240 volt hub. It comes with two connectors that go into the AC output and it already includes the communication. And I actually ran a test where I used this 240 volt hub and the two X1200s in split phase and I charged a large portion of my Delta Pro Ultra X from EcoFlow. I ran it at many different outputs and it had no problem below 5,000 watts total with these two units combined through the hub. If you really wanted to take this to the next level, get multiple of these Humsync batteries because they're really affordable and good quality, pair them with the units and then add an external MPPT charge controller 
to one of the server batteries on the open port of the battery. That would give you the ability to add 5,000 watts of extra solar to the whole thing. Again, you'd be basically customizing it on your own, but the point is you have the options where with basically nothing else on the market, you don't have that option. These will also fit inside of the Tech Protect Faraday bags that are the size XXL. They just barely don't fit in the extra large size. So if you're looking for EMP protection, where you wanna store these inside of a Faraday bag, you can go to techprotectbag.com. But these aren't perfect units. I need to clarify, there are some cons. It's not a deal breaker, but I dislike the state of charge readout on the screen. It doesn't use a Kula meter. A Kula meter is a specific device that actually tracks the amps going out and in to more accurately show you the true state of charge of the battery. This is just based on voltage, and voltage fluctuates depending on the load. Depending on how you're running the system, you may not get a truly accurate readout on the battery percentage. The side doors on this are pretty interesting. There's two latches, and you have to pull both of them down in order to get this to open up. It's on both sides, and this is how you get the ventilation. There's a fan on this side with an exhaust on this other side. If you forget to open these up and say you're just solar charging, you're gonna be building up heat in those batteries. Without these doors open, that hot air can't get out. There is a pretty strong plastic electronics smell when the fan is blowing pretty hard. It's not as strong the longer you use it. It kind of wears off eventually, but you can definitely smell it. The fan noise is pretty loud during heavy charging and heavy output, but that makes sense because it's a smaller unit. And then the last big gripe that I have is that it's only a two year warranty. Now you've probably had some questions while I've been doing this video and I want you to comment them down below. And I have a couple of questions myself. I wanna know how do they get their pricing so low with having so many options? because EcoFlow, Blue Eddy, Jackery, even though they're fair priced units, most of them don't have those features. I also wanna know if they're gonna be making a bigger unit because this is such an amazing unit on its own. I would like to see if they can come up with something bigger, maybe something that has like a 5,000 watt inverter. Doesn't have to be as portable. If it's gonna be more powerful, I'd expect it to be bigger and less portable, it'd be heavier. But if there's a way to do a similar setup where you have a bigger inverter, split phase, dark start, all of that, probably a better solar input because it's gonna be a bigger battery, but still be able to pair that with the server battery, then that's just a win-win in my opinion because when people can buy really affordable batteries, have Imon Tech do all of the programming and special work with the inverter, solar charge controller, everything, connect them together, and that takes people who have no experience in solar and gets them a very powerful system for a very affordable price. If you made it to the end of this video, I truly, truly appreciate it. And if you've been on my channel before, hopefully you'll subscribe. But I really do like the X1200. It has very few cons about it, and the price is just amazing. As with all of my videos, I'm not being told what I have to say or exclude or not to give a positive opinion or a negative opinion. This is just my own personal opinion and what I've experienced with the X1200. There's nothing that can sway my opinion about this. And it truly is just an amazing unit. This is my go-to unit for really portable power because it's so easy to move around. Even when I take this in my truck, if I bring say my E3600 LFP, because that's one of my other common units that I take, it's bigger and bulkier. So if I have to put that on the floor of the back of my truck where my kids are, well then one of them is sitting with their feet up. This is so short and so compact and robust that I can actually put this on the floor of my truck and I don't worry about my kids stepping and walking on it because they're not going to hurt it. If you need portable power that has the capability of running an RV, a cabin, a fridge, a sump pump, a mini fridge, anything, this can do it. This can run big things and small things, just not the really large split phase or 240 volt appliances. Pretty amazing unit. If you liked this video, you're probably gonna like this one as well. So make sure to check that out. And if you have any questions, go over to the website, poweredportablesolar.com. It'll soon be minutemansolar.com. And you'll find these units as well as other units and equipment that I like. Thanks guys. See you in the next video.